the MPFO was supposed to start some months ago and now it has finally come. What are your thoughts about the professionalism of the league in Nigeria? There is really nothing professional about the so-called prof Nigerian Professional Football League. Because even in the days of our amateur league from 1972 to 1989, I think we have better spectacle and we have even a more acceptable organization than we are having now. We are only professional in name and not in uh, action or in anything. Not even the players themselves can lay claim to be professionals because they are hardly known, unlike in the dose of amateur football, where you can easily pick stars from the players, I mean, from the from uh, individual clubs. You can look back at, uh, let's say, IICC, for instance, and name nothing less than eight stars among them. You can look at Enugu Rangers and talk about Emmanuel Okala, you talk about Christian Chuku, you talk about Christian Madu, you talk about Hifa Yandika, and so on. But right now, even the, the most avid followers of these clubs eh, cannot, by heart, uh, name three, four players of each club. And that also explains why they are never in contention for national team call-up. So the league is not what it's supposed to be. I think it is just a glorified professional league in name. So that's my take in it. And uh, you could also see that uh, like in those days, when even players were paid promptly, we never heard about players being old, but right now it is the order of the day. Players are never are, are never paid on time, and the, the old thing is just in shambles. All right, I'm still talking about the Nigerian Professional Football League. There are no sponsors for the league, and the league is not being broadcast on TV for us to uh, watch. Now, how do we grow with a situation like this for us, the fans? And, and why are they pulling out? Simple. They don't get value for what they are putting in. And nobody will... I mean, it's not... A, I mean, they are not running, running charity organizations, and there is no one who will deliberately put money around or try to pour water into a basket. So that's just the situation. If the league is good, everybody, it will be attractive. The Premiership, for instance, now does not need to advertise for sponsors. Uh, the Serie A of Italy does not need to advertise for sponsors. The, sim the, the, the reason is very simple. They have attractive products that will always endear uh, sponsors to them. That's even why as conservative as a typical Englishman is, England was able to attract sponsorship from abroad. And that's why you even see their national uh, cup being sponsored by Emirates in Asia. That's why you see a club, a, the champion, uh, Manchester City, being sponsored by Etihad in another Asian uh, uh, company. So, but the situation here is that even the local uh, sponsors here are already disenchanted because every time the, the name Nigerian Football League is mentioned, it is for one problem or one scandal or the other. And there is nobody who wants to cleanse his image and put it where the image is already dirty. So that's the, just the situation about the league. Until we, there is a proper restructuring of the league, until uh, the, when the league becomes attractive and television friendly, that's when TV rights can be sought for. Even I can tell you that most of the clubs themselves don't even want the television to come to the arena because of the underground things they do, like getting the referees compromised, unleashing violence on visiting teams, officials, and players. And when the TV camera is there, the TV camera will capture this, and they don't want it. Meanwhile, the television right is the greatest revenue generation uh, platform for clubs abroad, but it is not so here. So you could see that the whole thing is just moving in cycle, and our football is not in a proper shape. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much for giving us your thoughts on the Nigerian Professional Football League. We really do appreciate you, and I will get to talk to you more often to get more updates on the Nigerian Professional Football League. I mean, so you've heard him, Akule Sholaja, the editor-in-chief of Sports Village Square. Uh, he has said a whole lot about the Nigerian Football League. Is there anything more to add? Um, I would say this, though. Um, with respect to what Kunde said, when he was talking about lack of, um, what's it called, um, discipline, mm. we mentioned things like that. I feel like, yeah, when you see the players themselves, they are not disciplined. You have people like Rabi Ali, and that was someone that I had a lot of grouch about. Yes, he's still leaving out his match bands, uh, I think nine game band or mm -hmm. something like that. And uh, so far, so good. I don't feel like it's enough. I feel like um, when two elephants fight, it's the ant or the grass that suffers. I've been to the camps of the players, and despite the fact that we are saying it's not professional enough, at mm -hmm. least these boys are on the ground. They are fighting hard to find a way to feed their families. Yeah. I feel like the on-the-ground thing that's underlining is the lack of trust when it comes to the MPFL. I can't trust that my employer will fulfill this responsibility, so I don't trust him to take care of me mm -hmm. if I get injured. So that means I won't trust myself to give him my 110% because I know he has not proven to me that he will take care of me. Um, we were covering the signings for this season from multiple clubs, especially the clubs coming in from the NNL, and then we we'll find out that a lot of players were signed, but they didn't want to announce themselves, even the ones that were very active on social media. Why? Because they were like, I'm going to wait for the first three months. If my salary has been paid <laughs> for the first three months, then I will announce myself as a player in this club. If not, I'll carry my bag and I'll move. Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's a lack of trust. If you trust that these are the boys that you are going to stick with mm -hmm. and you provide what they need to have, your basic. I mean, I'm not talking about massive clubs like um, is it Aimba that don't even have a clubhouse. Yeah, it's Aimba now that they have land, but mm -hmm. they've not made the clubhouse even from the time that they were champions. They have the land, it's still there, it's following. The last time I even checked there, I saw Malu. That's cow <laughs> grazing on the clubhouse property. Yeah. So if you can't provide these basics, Rivers United, they have to be staying in one ramshackled hotel that you have to bend your head before you even to enter. So I'm like, why would you do that to the guys that are supposed to be representing us continentally? But on the good side, though, there's are still ups. Because why? When we saw TS Galaxy come into the eastern part of Nigeria over the weekend to play, they got into the clubhouse or, or the locker rooms. It was yeah. standardized. You see how everyone is running it. I know Africa has its problem. There's Tipi Manzembe that's showing us that you can be using these clubs to get private jets, get mansions for players. So I feel like there's still a turnaround. And again, if you don't have TV rights, run to social media. Exactly. Do it digitally. It is cheaper and it will reach, reach a more massive um, amount of population, population. So I feel like there's still hope. It has started. Let's see how it goes.